Welcome back, guys. So we are back at this exam same uh, exam paper of uh, 2009 of MBBS, AKU. We've done the first 10 questions of biology section. Now we are going to do the next 10 questions of biology section. Let's start. 31 says, which one would receive information from sensory neurons? Sensory neurons do not bring information to the gland. They would bring it to the central nervous system. And central nervous system has two parts, either the brain or the spinal cord. So we do have brain as one of the options, and we don't have the spinal cord in here. So all others are incorrect. Only brain is correct. What causes the pituitary glands to release a hormone? Hormone releasing is actually a response towards something because you guys know pituitary gland is a master gland of the body and uh, master gland controller is hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is going to release some, some hormones. It's going to make the pituitary release some hormones. Now, why would it do that? It would do that because it would have sensed some homeostatic imbalance in the body. Now, for example, if the body temperature rises or... or Forget about the body temperature. What about the glucose level in the body? Okay, forget about that as well. Pituitary gland has a bunch of functions. Okay, let's talk about the water osmoregulation. If the uh, water potential of the body, it rises, and the pituitary, the, the basically the receptors, they detect it. So it's going to be the motor neurons coming in from the central nervous system that's going to be actually stimulating the pituitary gland to release a hormone, okay? So it's actually from, and by the way, if you look at the pituitary gland, if you look at its detailed anatomy, which is a part of the MBBS curriculum, so anterior pituitary and post, there's an anterior pituitary and there's a posterior pituitary. And the posterior pituitary actually has nerve endings. Those nerve endings are actually motor neurons. Motor neurons actually transmit ADH and oxytocin. These two hormones, ADH and oxytocin, you guys know both of them. Oxytocin is also known as the love hormone or the bonding hormone. And ADH is also known as vasopressin. These are two MCQs that are commonly tested as well. Now, these um, nerve endings from the hypothalamus will stimulate the pituitary gland in response to the decrease or increase, the decrease in water potential of the body, for example. And hence, as a result of that, the pituitary gland, which has already been storing the ADH, will release it. Right. So it's actually the motor neuron that's coming in and stimulating the pituitary gland to release the ADH hormone. Right. This is just an example because ADH is released by the pituitary gland. So it's actually the motor neuron that causes it to do that because motor neuron has to do the effect. And pituitary gland is the effector in this particular case. It's actually acting as one of those effectors that are getting out the function. Right. ADH is going to go in and obviously act on the kidney. And that's also going to play its role. But yeah, pituitary gland is acting as an effector in this case. And motor neuron is coming in and it's actually stimulating it. Okay, none of the other options make sense at all. Muscle ref effector has nothing to do with pituitary. Pain receptor doesn't have anything to do here because it's in the skin. Reflex response, yeah, it can take place, but reflex response, again, a better answer is the motor neuron because that's, we do know that the motor neurons are actually responsible and, and no reflex response actually goes and all the way up to the pituitary and, and stimulate it, which is the most typical of nerve deafness. Now, nerve deafness, Nerve means it's something uh, wrong, something's wrong with the nerves and not with the conducting pathway. Your ear actually has two parts, two components. There's a conducting part of your ear, all right, and there is a sensory neural part of your ear. Remember that this is actually some part from some knowledge from your MBBS level. There's a sensory neural part of your ear as well, sensory neural, and sensory neural actually contains your hearing nerves. Take a, and conducting part is actually just your external auditory canal all the way up to the tympanic membrane and all the auditory ossicles as well. Now, after the auditory ossicles, it's the sensory neural part that comes in. Now, sensory neural actually is a, or just tympanic membrane ke us side pe sara sensory neural start ho jata hai. Ab, Conducting part, ki baat nahi ho rahi, it's the sensory neural that we are talking about. Uh, auditory ossicles are also a part of the conducting. Okay, tympanic membrane ke baad auditory ossicles aate hai. You guys know malleus interstipes. Those three are also a part of the conducting system. Conducting, external auditory canal ka hi part. Ke baad jo conducting tip deafness jis mein aati hai na, ye uska part hoote hai. Ta agar auditory ossicles mein koi masla hoota hai, to that's not a part of nerve deafness. Okay, that's not a nerve deafness. That's a conductive deafness. So the damage caused to the eardrum is not a nerve deafness. That's a conductive deafness because eardrum ka matlab kya tympanic membrane ki baat ho rahi. Eardrum is the tympanic membrane and ossicles are those tiny bones that are present after the tympanic membrane. 
caused by damage to the hair cells in the cochlea. Yes, that's the answer. Hair cells are not actually hair. These are, it's not these hair. Hair cells are, is actually a, a particular name given to them because their structure is uh, it resembles a hair. But these hair cells are actually sensory receptors, and these sensory receptors are actually taking in signals from hair and if in the cochlea. They are located inside the cochlea, and cochlea is a part of sensory neural uh, conductive pathway, sensory neural pathway. All right. And so the hair cells are going to take in the stimulus from there and take them all the way to the brain, to the auditory cortex of the brain. All right. So auditory, matlab, our cortex has multiple lobes. One lobe is the ear that is on the side of the ear. It's called auditory cortex. Auditory cortex. So we go there. sensory signals. Okay. So yeah, it's option B is the best answer because it involves the neurons and nerves. Hair cells are actually the sensory neurons. Now, 34, which hormone triggers a... Uh, cellular release of glucose, fatty acid, amino acid into your bloodstream. Now, this is a tricky question, by the way. If you see glucose, what do you do? Glucagon is marked. That's not the answer, actually. Glucagon is incorrect. You, you guys have to look at the entire question and see what it's actually asking you. It's about glucose, fatty acids, amino acids. So it's actually an overall increase in the metabolism, right? It's, it's actually a catabolic reaction that is taking place over here. So in order for the catabolic reaction to increase and the metabolism to increase, because catabolism is actually a part of the metabolism in the long run. So thyroxine or thyroid hormone is required. Which part of meiosis is shown over here? You guys can see that the chromosomes are still intact. The chromatids have not separated yet. It's the chromosomes that are separating from each other. And they're not located at the equatorial plate. Rather, they are located away from the equatorial plate and they're moving towards the poles, right? So this is definitely anaphase, but this is anaphase one because the chromatids have not yet separated from one another. So this is anaphase one, okay? Not two. Two may chromatids are separated. Which organism is capable of sexual reproduction by spores? Spores are present in fungi, and fungi bread mold is an example of, uh, of fungi. Then, which best describes the corpus luteum? Corpus luteum is formed after the rupture of the um, of the ovum from it. Uh, ovum bolo, like rupture of the yeah female gamete from it, right? Female gamete from the From the ovary results um, in the formation of corpus luteum. From the ovarian follicles, take a graphene follicles. Once the graphene follicles rupture, they are going to release the ovum and they are going to form the corpus luteum. The so corpus luteum is actually the gra ruptured graphene follicle. Now, which shows the pathway of the sperm from origin into fert until fertilization? So origin is actually all the way from epididymis. Epididymis comes first. Then vas deferens is actually the sperm duct that actually transfers it. Sperm ducts transfers it from the vas deferens, from the epididymis all the way to the, all the way to the urethra and everywhere. Uh, urethra on the part mein aajate. Urethra se ejaculation ke through uterus mein chale jate and uterus ke baad oviduct mein jate. Remember that oviduct mein direct nahi jate. So option B is the best answer. 39, which primary membrane is involved in gases exchange? Is cancer chorion? Hey, this is just simple factual knowledge. You can just study it up. An organism has this genotype. How many gamete combinations are pro produced from this? Now, remember one thing, guys. This is a combination question. Combination order does not really really matter. Now, gamete combination is the genotype. So, remember that gamete is half-half, right? This is the genotype. Now, पहले वाले में इन दोनों एक्सेस में से कोई एक आ सकता है ना तो दो ऑप्शंस है आपके पास क्योंकि एक बड़ा एक्स एक छोटा एक्स है दूसरे वाली पोजीशन में कोई एक आ सकता है दो में से तो अगेन दो ऑप्शंस है ना कैपिटल वाई स्मॉल वाई आ सकता है लेकिन तीसरे वाले में यू कैन ओनली हैव अ स्मॉल जेड यू डोंट हैव एनी अदर ऑप्शन बिकॉज़ बोथ ऑफ देम आर स्मॉल 2 टाइम्स 2 इज एक्चुअली 4 4 कॉम्बिनेशंस आर एक्चुअली पॉसिबल ओके एंड दिस कंप्लीट्स आवर सेकंड 10 क्वेश्चंस ऑफ बायोलॉजी दैट्स इट फॉर दिस वीडियो गाइस आई विल सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो विद द नेक्स्ट 10 क्वेश्चंस थैंक